If you're thinking about moving to the Jackson, Mississippi metro area, well, I've got 19 things in this video that you got to know before you get here. And by the time we're done, people are going to think you were born here. What's up everybody? My name is Jared Laster. I'm a realtor with Keller Williams right here in the Jackson, Mississippi metro area. And if you're somebody who's come to this channel, this video, because you're thinking about at some point in the future, you may be moving to the Jackson metro. Well, I've got one easy first step that you need to take. That's head on down, click that subscribe button and make sure when you do, you hit the bell because that way you'll get notified every single time a new video like this one comes out and by the time you get ready to move here you're gonna have all the information you could ever need about moving to Jackson and if you're somebody who is really more on the cusp of making that decision or getting here to the Jackson Metro well you got to take it one step further what does that mean you need to go ahead give us a call shoot us a text or send us an email or even hey really y'all it's just whatever you need to do to get in touch with us because we have got your back moving to the Jackson Metro. So let's get right into it. We'll start with the number 19 thing on the list and I want you to know it was actually nine things when I started getting the list ready to make this video then it jumped on up to 17 and just before filming this it got all the way up to 19. So who knows I may have to make a second version of this in the future. But for today 19 is the top of the list. That's where we're starting. So number 19. I'll tell you a little bit about the area and how it's divided up that you're moving into. So on the west side of the metro, you've got Hines County. Now Hines is home to Jackson, which is the capital city. Also Clinton is gonna be probably the second biggest area there. You've also got some other areas like Byram and Terry and just a lot out there in Hines County. Moving to the north side, that's gonna be Madison County. In Madison, you've got Ridgeland, which is just north of the city of Jackson. It's right on the county line, right on County Line Road. You go from Hines to Madison County, that's Ridgeland. Just north of that, Madison. A little bit farther up you've got Canton and Flores out there as well as well as the Gluckstadt area. Uh, big area up there in Madison County. Madison also borders the north side of the reservoir. Now if you cross over that reservoir into the east side of the metro that's going to be Rankin County. Now Rankin County has that res area which is uh, yeah, we'll have to make another video about this, but it's the 39047 Brandon area. There's also the city of Brandon, Flowood, Pearl, uh, farther south, you've got Richland, Florence. So there's a lot, obviously, in Rankin County. All three of these counties are pretty good sized counties and they've got a lot of uh, different uh, variation and diversity between the three. So now you know the metro split into three counties, Hines, Rankin, and Madison counties. Jumping right into number 18 on the list. This one is gonna be one that is probably pretty obvious if you already are moving from somewhere in the south or if you're in the north and you know anything about the south, it's gonna be obvious still. But there's some things you may not think about and that is the heat. It does get hot here or right now. It's late July. Temperatures are running in the mid to upper 90s, sometimes even cracking that 100 degree mark. But what really makes it just unbearable some days is the humidity. It makes it feel so much hotter than it is. You just walk outside for a few minutes and you just you get drenched because the air is so thick with that moisture and it just it makes it feel hotter. On the flip side of that, if you are moving from farther up north and you're used to having to deal with a lot of snow and ice and things like that, you pretty much don't have to worry about it. When you get here in the winter, you're gonna see that it's relatively mild. You might occasionally get the little bit of snow or ice, but usually it's not even enough to impact the roads. And when it is, it's a big deal and it doesn't happen very often. Keeping with the weather theme, my number 17 thing on the list is strong storms, severe weather and tornadoes. It's not just the regular storms. We do have those come through the lines that can produce uh, straight line winds, tornadoes, lightning, hail, that kind of stuff. We also will occasionally have to deal with some of that coming up from the Gulf. Now we're not on the coast, obviously, so we don't have the full effect of a hurricane, but you know, tropical storms, hurricanes, they can come up and bring us some more of that weather. So we get it kind of back and forth in the summer sometimes, north, east, south, 
and that's just how it is. But you know, it's really not that bad. You get kind of used to it. There are tornadoes and strong storms, but most of it is not so severe that it's causing major damage every single time that happens. So don't let that scare you away just yet. We've got a lot more things to get through on this list. Moving on to number 16, and this is one if you're coming from a bigger metro area, may potentially be tough to deal with, and that is public transportation or transportation in general. If you live in the city of Jackson, you can take advantage of the JTRAN bus network that can get you around in the city of Jackson. But if you want to get around in, you know, Clinton, Madison, Flowood, anywhere outside of just that city, you're pretty much going to be on your own. So that means for the most part, just about everybody's going to have to have a car. You know, unless you live right close to where you need to get to, you're going to need a car. Now you can bike, walk if you want to. Most of the area is not that pedestrian and bike friendly though. Uh, there's some recreational type trails which we'll get to but for commuting i would say you're most likely just going to have to have a car now since you're going to be buying a car you may be wondering what do people in mississippi drive well it is the south we are a smaller big city so we are kind of tied to those rural routes of the state and you know that just means we like things with a little more utility so you're going to find a lot of bigger vehicles you know suvs trucks and what's the number one selling vehicle here in Mississippi? It's the same as it is in the rest of the country. That's the Ford F-150. But you know, you don't have to have one of those. They are nice if you need to move some things. You've got a big truck, you can throw stuff in the back and take it wherever you need to go. But the next thing on the list, number 14 is gonna help if you don't happen to have a truck or a bigger vehicle and you need to haul some stuff around. Well, Mississippi is known as the hospitality state. And we're known as that because in general, we're pretty friendly people. Everywhere you go is going to have their outliers and people that just don't quite fit in. But you don't want to be one of those people. So not only do you get to enjoy everybody being nice, friendly, helpful whenever they can be, you get to come be a part of that too and help us keep that name being the hospitality state. Now don't you mess that up for us. You know, when you see somebody coming, you know, down the road, you're going the opposite direction. We don't know one finger. We do two fingers up. Just flip it up from your wheel. Let them know, hey, you know, have a nice day, that kind of thing. You see somebody on the street. You know, don't just be cold and walk by. At least give them a nod, ask them how they're doing. Hey, it's just what we do down here. Even though it seems like we're as nice as we can be, we still tend to get a bad rap in the media and some other places you may look. And uh, you know, you may hear that Mississippi is uh, uneducated, backwards thinking. Ah, oh, that's really not the case. You know, if you get here and you start meeting people, you'll notice that most Mississippians just do not fit into that stereotype. As a matter of fact, not just speaking for Mississippi as a whole, but here in the Jackson metro area, um, you know, it's the capital city, so the top employer is going to be the government. But right after that is healthcare and education. So we've got the top hospitals, uh, the top educational hospitals, and then a lot of educational institutions here in the state. You've got Jackson State, uh, Mississippi College, Bell Haven, Millsaps, uh, Heinz Community College. I mean, there's a lot. There's just there's a lot of education here. So to say that Mississippi is uneducated, well. You're not going to see that when you get here. But not everything they say about Mississippi is untrue. You may have heard Mississippi is right in the middle of the Bible Belt and that is 100% true and they don't call it that for nothing. But when you get here, you're going to see that there are a lot of churches, all different denominations, pretty much everywhere you go. And uh, I actually checked a Pew Research study said that 49% of Mississippians said that they attend church regularly. I think that was at least once a month. and. 75% of Mississippians say they pray daily. So it's a lot of prayers going up, making Mississippi the great place that it is. But I do want to throw this in there. It's not just only that what you think you're going to find. There are some things that might surprise you here. Uh, matter of fact, right up the street from my house, there is a Hindu temple. And uh, it's actually pretty neat. If you come here, you should go by and just take a look at it. It's, it's not like most things you're going to find in Mississippi. And if you're driving by on I-20 over in Jackson, you'll see there's a Sikh temple over there too. There's probably more that I don't even know about. So if you're here and you see something, let me know because I'll add it to the next video. So just because we're one of the most religious states, doesn't mean we don't like to kick back, have a drink every now and then. But if you go to Kroger and you're looking up and down the aisle, try to find, uh, I don't know, a bottle of Jack, some Crown, or some vodka, whatever you're looking for, you're not going to find it at Kroger. Uh, you're only going to find liquor harder higher alcohol contents at a liquor store that's going to be designated to sell that and you're only going to find those in wet counties that's right in mississippi we still have dry counties as a matter of fact counties in mississippi are dry by default and they have to elect to become wet counties so uh, Rankin county actually currently is a dry county Hines and madison 
are wet counties. But how that's done may be changing soon because they did just introduce a new law that goes into effect beginning of next year and flips that. So counties will soon be wet by default and they'll have to elect to be dry. So we'll see how many do make that election and continue to be dry counties. But it's, you know, to some places it seems like a crazy thing, but we've got them here. Uh, some places you just can't buy it at all. And where you can buy it, you can only buy it at a liquor store. Now, if you're looking for something fun to do other than having a drink, or maybe while you do, you're gonna find that there's plenty for you to get out and do here in Mississippi. If you like to get on the water, we've got the reservoir, we've got the Pearl River running through here, so you can get out you know, on a boat, a jet ski, kayak, I mean, a lot of fun out there, maybe go fishing. So anything you wanna do on the water, uh, you can just about do it here. Maybe if you're looking for something else, if you wanna you know, check out some of the hiking trails, biking trails, uh, all those are all along the Natchez Trace that runs through here, and it is uh, really, really pretty to go check out pretty much any time of year, so I'd highly recommend that. Um, if that maybe is not quite what you're looking for, well, it doesn't stop there. We've got some of the top golf courses in the state as well. You probably won't find me on the golf course because, well, you know, I know what I'm good at, and it's not golf. And whatever outdoor recreational activity you choose to enjoy here in Mississippi, uh, you're gonna want to keep the number nine thing on the list in mind, and that is you're gonna have to deal with mosquitoes when you're out there, uh, specifically and especially in the summer. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you've got some bug spray, get that on you before you go out there. And uh, just my personal recommendation, go ahead and get the stronger stuff because these mosquitoes around here are something serious. You know, a lot of people say the mosquitoes will just about carry you away and sometimes it feels like they just might. If the great outdoors is just not what you're looking for, maybe you'd rather go shopping. Well, I've got some great news for you. Uh, here in the metro area, we've got some of the, uh, well, some of the most and best shopping that you can go to in the state. Uh, Ridgeland has probably got the most as far as shopping destinations because they've got uh, the North Park Mall, a lot of different things on County Line Road, uh, and over on Highland Colony Boulevard, you've got the Renaissance, and there's just a lot of new developments coming up there. There's just a lot to do in Ridgeland if you're looking to shop. You can do some in Madison too. In Flowood, we've got the Dogwood Shopping Center and Market Street. A lot of things to check out there. Of course, we've got the Mississippi Outlets in Pearl. So you can see we just really do have a lot of choices here in the Jackson Metro and not just uh, big name stores. We've also got a lot of smaller local businesses. So make sure you check those out. Uh, we love supporting them. They're a great part of the community and we want to keep them around. And when you get done shopping or you've had your day out on the reservoir, you're probably gonna be pretty hungry. And so I got some more great news for you. The food here in the Jackson metro area is amazing. Of course, we've got all the normal chain options that you may be used to, but the best food you're gonna find is gonna come from all these great local restaurants. Uh, there's some great ones downtown in Jackson. You've got the district, uh, a lot of stuff in Flowood. I mean, it's, just, it's all over the metro area. Just look into it. When you get here, there's a Facebook group called Jackson Foodies. Uh, you'll want to check that out. Uh, and there's a Mississippi Foodies and several of those. Just check into it because, hey, if you, especially if you're only here for a little while, you want to experience all the great food we've got to offer and there's a lot that you're going to need to get to. Now we're already down to number six on the list and this is just going to be, you know, most bigger areas or cities or even small towns usually have at least one big holiday or festival or event. Uh, you know, where I came from, I actually came from a little bit town in East Texas. Believe it or not, uh, Mardi Gras was the big thing there. It was Mardi Gras upriver in Jefferson, Texas. You should go check it out. Uh, but here in the Jackson area, uh, Mardi Gras is still kind of a thing, but probably, you know, surprise me, one of the biggest holidays that we get out and have a big parade and it really kind of looks more like Mardi Gras, which you may be used to seeing somewhere else. And that is the St. Paddy's Day Parade. So they have that here in Jackson every year. It's a lot of fun for you to get out there and enjoy. Uh, you know, of course, just make sure you wear green when you go. Of course, we've already covered that there is a lot to do here in the metro area, but if you can't quite find what you're looking for here locally, uh, well, it's actually not that difficult to go check out some other things on a little short day or weekend trip. We're not very far from the coast, so if you wanna head down to the beach, uh, you can do that. Just about a six hour drive will get you up to the Smoky Mountains if you want to, or a little bit closer, you can go over to the mountains up in Arkansas, it can be nice. We've got casinos that you can head over to Vicksburg and a lot of actually historical stuff that you can check out there as well. Um, and also casinos and more golf courses uh, up in Philadelphia, Mississippi. And all that's just little short day trips that you can get to easily 
here from the Jackson Metro. So you're not just stuck here and you're not just so isolated from everything else. It's a pretty good area if you want to be able to get to some other areas quickly and easily. You can do that from right here. Now, my number four thing that you need to know on the list is one of those things that you won't find here in the metro area, and that is major professional sports teams. We do have a minor league baseball team in Pearl called the Mississippi Braves. It's part of the Atlanta Braves organization. And so we've got that if you wanna go check it out. But just because we don't have a pro sports team here doesn't mean there aren't a lot of pro sports fans. So you will find a lot of uh, you know, NFL wise, you're gonna find a lot of Saints fans, some Cowboys fans. And so, you know, we still have it here. We just don't have our own team locally. But what we do have, being here in the heart of SEC country, is SEC football and all the college sports to go along with it. We've got two SEC schools in the state, Mississippi State University and the school up north, I mean, Ole Miss. They're up there too. I'm giving something away there. Anyway, number three on the list, and that is here in Mississippi, we have a very rich history and there's a lot of things good and bad that have happened and i would encourage anybody that's moving to the state to check out some of the great museums we have we've got the new mississippi history museum and right next door to that we've got the mississippi civil rights history museum those are both great museums and they're not the only ones checking those out can give you a really good picture of you know where we came from in mississippi and really help you appreciate where we are today and where we're going for the future and if you're moving here that's something that you get to be a part of. And believe it or not, we're already down to number two on the list. This one's gonna be a more practical one. Maybe could even save you some money, depending on where you end up going. And that is, I just want you to know, taxes vary pretty widely depending on where you live. Now, some things don't. Income tax is gonna be the same wherever you go. Sales tax is, for the most part, gonna be the same wherever you go with a few minor exceptions. What does change though from county to county and even from city to city within a county or being outside the city, and that's gonna be your property taxes and also your vehicle registrations. Those are gonna be some of the bigger things that are gonna be affected by where you live. If you live in Hines County, that's where you're gonna see typically the highest property taxes for a particular value. Rankin and Madison counties are gonna be on the lower end when it comes to those same taxes. And we finally made it to the last thing on the list. And the number one thing, it's less of a thing about the metro area and more just something for you to remember when you move here and become a part of Mississippi. And that is, don't forget to take a step back, enjoy life, appreciate uh, your neighbors, help them out when you can, and always get out there and enjoy your family and all the things that you can do. Have some fun here in Mississippi. You know, we just we like to be a little bit more laid back. You don't always have to take life so seriously. It doesn't have to always be so fast paced. And I promise you, if you do that when you get here, you're gonna love it. You're gonna fit in with everyone else. And I can't wait for you to be a part of Mississippi. So with that said, now you've got the 19 things that you needed to know. And if you want to know more, you want to keep learning things like this, you need to go on down there, hit that subscribe button and click that bell. Because if you don't, you won't get notified and you need to get notified every time one of these new videos goes live because we've got all the information that you're going to need to know before you move to and live in the Jackson area. If you're somebody who is ready to make that move now or in the very near future, take that one step further. Go ahead and reach out. Give us a call. Shoot us a text. Send us an email or even track out that bank account. Whatever you got to do to get in touch with us, that's what you need to do because we've got your back. Move to the Jackson Metro. I'm about to go get me one of these craft beers, fishing pole, head out to the res. Can't wait to see you there. Thanks for watching this one.